Jeff, thanks for being with us. Um, Exxon and Texaco are betting, obviously, on natural gas with their recent acquisitions. But smaller natural gas related companies are also focusing on, on oil and expanding their oil activities. What does this dichotomy mean for the industry? Obviously there's going to be a lot of consolidation and the smaller companies have to go where the money is, but what does it ultimately mean? Well I think it's really a matter of getting every last bit of these fossil fuels that we can. Um, and the only way they're going to be able to do this uh, at this point is consolidation. Um, you know, the one thing we, we get so excited about, all these new natural gas finds, and everyone's really excited because finally, you know, natural gas prices are going down, mm -hmm. and, you know, we have this huge uh, supply now. Um, but it's kind of, it's very dangerous to get too excited about these things because, you know, it's very easy to forget that, you know, fossil fuels, we deplete fossil fuels. Once they're gone, they're gone. Right. Or you get to the point where they're no, no, no longer economically viable uh, to, to produce. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen with natural gas. I think, it, you know, in 10 years, wh where are we going to be? Uh, you know, a lot of our, um, our new buses and trucks in the, of the future are going to run on, on natural gas. So now you have a supply that was once, you know, really utilized just for, for you know, for one purpose. Now all of a sudden it's becoming a transportation fuel on a, a mm -hmm. pretty large scale. So we're going to go through that natural gas pretty fast. Um, so I Do would you think regulation is going to slow that down at all? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think in some, in some um, respects you, you do need some kind of regulation, especially when it comes to the environmental concerns. Uh, I know that in New York um, there's been some issues over yep. the Marcellus the uh, situation. Shed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's kind of like you have to weigh your options and, and be realistic about it. Of course, we, we, need every, we need every ounce of energy we can get. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, and you know that's why even people that are not big oil advocates are saying, yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to drill offshore. It's going to happen. Um, but you know, again, weigh your options. Are, we're going to get how 10 years, 15 years of, of of power from one source, but are we are we willing to pollute our water to a point where we can no longer use it? Um, you have the same problem in uh, in in Alberta with the tar sands operations. I mean, it's completely destroying the Athabasca River, um, which millions of people rely on for, for fresh water. Um, so I think with, without regulation in place, we're just going to repeat some of the, the same mistakes we've made in the past. So how expensive does oil need to get before different kinds of green or alternative energy can be cost competitive? Well, I would, I mean, I, both subsidized and not subsidized. Well, I would argue it's already, it's already uh, competitive. Um, you know, this idea of, of renewables um, relying on subsidies um, to, to compete is an illusion. Mm -hmm. um, fossil fuels, actually from 2002 to 2008, uh, fossil fuel subsidies came to, I think, 78 or $79 billion. Renewables got about $29 billion. So the whole idea of, you know, renewables only being able to survive with the subsidies is an absolute illusion. Um, and I think that, you know, it's unfortunate we don't hear more about that because it's, it's, um, it's an issue that is very easily forgotten mm -hmm. um, in Washington. Uh, when when, when uh, our policymakers are, are standing up in front of uh, Congress and, they're, and they're, they're making their case for something, yeah, I don't know if they just don't know um, or, uh, or they just prefer not to, not to worry about it because, hey, you know, how long are they going to be in office? Right. So do you see more consolidation happening in this sector? In renewables? In renewables, in oil. I mean, it, it, obviously you have to go to where the money is. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's going to be consolidation across the board in energy. As, as far as renewables, absolutely. I mean, I think that uh, one thing in 2010, I, I, I had zero doubt about this. I think a lot of the smart grid activity, mm -hmm. um, all that stuff's going to get consolidated. It's all technology. There are only a few companies that can really take us to the next level. So you're going to see a lot of these small private companies, they're going to get gobbled up real fast. So the larger companies, I know Exxon has uh, a clause where they can get out if it's overly right. regulated. Do you see that being an issue? Would that be a huge detriment to natural gas and some of the smaller companies? I think it depends how they regulate it. I, I personally don't believe that, um, that the government is going to uh, Look at the water issue as as a problem. I I, I suspect that it could be a very real well, problem. I mean, New York thinks it's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but even though it's a problem, doesn't mean that they're going to regulate it. I think at the end of the day, you know, special interest controls what happens. And um, I mean, the reality is, you know, uh, it's very it's very very difficult um, to fight uh, 
to fight the, you know, the big oil companies and the coal companies. And then this is an attack on them. It's just how it is. It's how our system works. Um, and I, you know, as an investor, um, you have to be, you know, I think um, you have to just be aware of these things. Right. So OPEC has a surplus 2010. What does that mean for the industry? Well, I, I don't believe anything OPEC says, first okay. of all. I mean, it, there's, it, you know, OPEC is, is about as reliable as Chinese drywall. You know, it's just, it's, um, I, I don't believe anything they say. Um, all the, everything they've said for the last 10 years has been a lie. Um, and, you know, and again, it, it, you start getting into the whole idea of, oh, we have all this oil left. Um, I, I, you know, you can have as much as you want, but, you know, the, the tap is only so big. And mm -hmm. um, at some point, you know, economically, it's just, it, it, it no longer makes sense. Um, and I think that's really, I think that's really the issue at hand. Um, so, yeah, don't believe OPEC. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Sure.